Franchising is the most misunderstood and most overlooked form of entrepreneurship. We're here to educate you and help you find the entrepreneur within. Franchising is not all about the French fries. We find that individuals who are exploring business ownership tend to have a lot of misperceptions and misunderstandings about the franchise industry. So what we want to do is help prospective business owners make confident and educated decisions before moving forward or not moving forward with the business. Welcome to Unpredicted Entrepreneur. Hello and welcome to episode 38 of Unpredicted Entrepreneur. My name is Sarah Wasco and I am joined by my colleague Roxanne Rapsky. And the purpose of our podcast is to bring to you all things about business ownership and franchising. And I'm delighted today to welcome Mark and Melissa Overcash because they have experience on both sides of the spectrum. They are independent business owners as well as franchisees. And I uh, want wanted them to share their background and experiences with our listeners today and really help people understand how a uh, different business ownership can be developed in different formats. So Mark and Melissa, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank, thank you, you for, for having, having us. us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I mentioned you're an independent business owner. You have, you're the owner of Agape Home Care, which is Senior Care Services. And you're also the owners of a franchise uh, since what, a little over a year? Just Class like, 101. Absolutely. Got what, November. Yeah. Per, Perfect. So class 101 is college planning. So we kind of giggle that you have two forms of seniors that you work with. You have elderly seniors and you have college seniors. Absolutely. She made it like a tagline from seniors to seniors, you know, <laughs> one caring for them at the, you know, the final phases life. and making it comfortable yeah. for them in that transitional period. And the second was picking them up at the start of life and 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 helping them with that experience move yes. forward as as seniors going into their adulthood. I love it. I love it. So you have a very interesting story, Melissa, about Agape and kind of how you became the owner of that business. So share with mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. Well, I actually, as a young stay-at-home mom, I was looking for some employment. My sister's a nurse and, you know, she, I was talking to her and she said, you know, you ought to call home care agencies or home health agencies and find out if they need a remote on-call person. And I thought, okay, I'll do that. Had no idea what I was asking for, but got the yellow pages out, you know, <laughs> it was all alphabetical. Because that's what we did. That's what we did. We did. Back then. That's what we did. If that ages me, there you go. Um, got the yellow pages out started with the a's obviously agape was one of the first so i called and just inquired hey are you guys hiring an on-call coordinator and they said oh my goodness yes you know and it was very quick and i thought this may not be a good thing um but they invited me in for an interview and i i took that position remotely which I think is interesting because what mm -hmm. year was this? 1999. Okay, wow. so 1999 yes. when nobody really knew much about remote work and right. you are taking a remote yes. job with how many children at home? I had three children at home. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was done with a MAPSCO and a pager. Okay. <laughs> I remember I don't even around. know what a MAPSCO is. <laughs> you don't? A MAPSCO? Oh, yeah. Oh, I had yeah. one. I yeah. was in sales with AT and T, and I had it's a book. It was a map. In oh, a book. like the Thomas Guide, um, kind of, maybe. kind of like that, like yeah. a big yeah. book where you looked up the grids. Okay, Correct. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Before GPS. Awesome. Yeah. It's our navigation. Of Google Maps. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so where you had to actually pull over and like study. <laughs> yes. It, right? yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh my goodness. My kids were great that. at that. <laughs> they all learned the trade. Awesome. Okay, so we digress, but tell us more. <laughs> um, and soon, you know, after I began doing that, I there was a scheduling coordinator that worked in the office. She was going out for a surgery procedure, and they called me and said, you know, would you mind filling in for us while she's out? And, well, I thought, okay, I could do it for a short amount of time and make arrangements, which I did. And then, you know, she never came back, <laughs> as that happens. And I just continued on that journey with them. You know, something opened up in finance, something opened up in, you know, payroll, something opened up. So I just worked through that. And before I knew it, I had been there, you know, five, six years and had pretty much done every position there. And uh, they asked me, you know, would you be interested in the administrator's role, which is, you know, basically the... Uh, president of operations. And so I said, you know, uh, I think this might be a good time for me to do that. I think I'll, I'll take that. And I worked there um, until 2011 in that position. Okay. So you were there 12 years uh -huh. in Correct. a variety of roles. Yes. 
Okay, so 2011, what happened? Uh, my kids were teenagers, and, you know, that was a hard time, and I really needed to focus 100% on them, and that job really takes 100% of your time 24-7, and I stepped away to uh, do corporate um, accounting for an oil and gas company in, Fort Worth, I mean, in Dallas and was driving back and forth, but it was a clock in, clock out. I didn't have to give that mental capacity that it took seven days a week, so it worked out perfectly. And then in 2017, so that's a quite a long time later, yep. the owners, which were uh, two partners, called me and said, you know, we really have not found anyone that we feel like has as much experience that we would trust with our agency, and we're wanting to retire. And would you be interested in coming back and taking over? And I said, you know, let me let me think about that. Let me pray about that. And I took some time to do that. And all of our kids by that time were in college. And so I thought, you know, that's this is good timing for us. And I ended up uh, going back in as operations. And also at that time, letting them know, hey, if you're retiring, and I know selling might be coming up in a, in a small time frame, I just want to be considered first before you sell mm -hmm. without, you know, without mm -hmm. letting me know. And right. they did in 2019. They, so you decided they mm -hmm. were ready to retire. And in 2019, you uh, purchased the business correct. from them. Yes. And then COVID just and then six months COVID. later. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Not a good yeah. way to start out. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. So tell us kind of how that then evolved um, as you with you as a new owner and a pandemic. Uh, you know, there's a lot of fear, a lot of unknowns. I mean, I'd been with the agency. I knew the ins and outs. I knew the historicals. I knew what I could depend on. And this was unprecedented, really. And I did not know what to expect anymore. And mm -hmm. that was very fearful from the ownership perspective. Um, just because I was just getting, you know, digging in and following the business plan and we were really picking up momentum. And then there was just this, um, fear of stopping and we were considered, you know, um, absolutely needed. So we never did close, Essential. but it, it, it definitely halted our services in facilities and it halted our, our services in homes where people were scared and just getting through that was, was lengthy. And then also the quarantines for COVID. So anytime a caregiver or anybody internally in our office had a symptom, you know, we were one person down, two persons down at a Or time. had even been exposed for Correct. that matter. At that they, time exposed yeah. in 14 days. 14 yeah. days. So, you know, I found myself in 2021 coming back from the Christmas holidays um, with no staff at all. And Every single person through the holiday in our staff got yeah. sick. And did oh. not come back. And so I that was 2020, um, Christmas 2020. So you came back in January of 2021? Correct. Okay, with no staff. For Zero. three months from January to March, oh. I was solely in the office alone. What did you do? Please tell me what you did. Um, you know what? I, I lived in the day-to-day. -day. I just tried to stay focused on the day and not alarm all of our staff that, hey, I'm on the only one here. So I just was very quiet and I just did what I needed to do and scheduled and did payroll and worked on finance and did marketing and tried to balance all of that along with, you know, the 24-hour the responsibilities of, of that. And then dealing with the COVID um, scares, you know, a client that had symptoms, did it expose a caregiver? Okay, do I work down from that? Because we had a nurse in the position, which that was her job. And I also became the nurse at that time. Wow. So it was it was very stressful. It was probably one of the most stressful things as a business owner that I'd ever experienced. Um, and, you know, Mark was so gracious because I think during this time he saw this deterioration of me and my wearing through. And I, you know, was trying to stay very balanced in it, but it was very difficult. And and he was more than willing to step up as a partner in life and say, you know, you need help. And and I think I can help you. So at that point, Mark, you retired from how many years with the city of Hearst? 31 years. 31 years yeah. at the city of Hearst. Big and decision. Yeah. Huge. Well, it was. I mean, it, and it really kind of unfolded in the form of, you know, our daughter was exposed to it and she had COVID. So yep. she was quarantined at home, which required the city of Hearst to quarantine me at home. While she was still working at the office that was empty, it was just her. And I'm like, look, if I've got to be at home, I might as well go in with you and at least try to help you through some of this time where you're by yeah. yourself. And the minute I got in the door between the phone calls and admissions and the constantly changing CDC rules and the regulations and things we were having to do, I was like, 
I don't know how you've done it for three months, but you're not no. doing it anymore. Wow. So the decision was instant. I made a phone call to our HR and said, look, you know, you have to always plan for the last day of the month, the way they do the retirement system. And um, was it's time to go help my wife before she I, she doesn't come home one yeah. night. She's laying in the <laughs> yeah. floor at Agape. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of where that yeah. journey began, you know, was not having her stranded and be by herself there. So big move, obviously, big move. Yeah, as huge. you said, but prioritized your family. Absolutely. Which um, is very admirable, certainly. So you worked through um, those difficulties. You were able to do that together. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the dynamic with Melissa, you being the owner, and then your husband stepping in to join you in the business and not yes. really having been involved in the business. Um, how did that all play out? Uh I think, you know, it was dysfunction, I think, at first, it was. just because <laughs> we were we were navigating uh, waters that, you know, were unknown to right. us. Right. And, and and not only as partners in a business, but also in our marriage, because here we are working day and night and then we're going home and, you know, you and you just, carpooling you, to yes. and from. Yeah, yeah. Yes. they do. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So you, you kind of lose a little bit there. I was so grateful, though, I have to say, and I knew what a sacrifice this has, has was for him. And he was struggling with that adjustment from retirement to now doing this. And I, and I sense that as well. So I think that added a little bit of stress to me thinking I didn't want him to feel regret or that he made the wrong decision. And I wanted to support how he was feeling at the same time. I was like, you're kind of, you know, impeding on my space <laughs> here. And, you know, That's and a lot to juggle. It was. it was, it really was. And also, you know, I think, just the day-to-day -day decisions I was used to being solely responsible for and making those very quickly. And he came in with a different, um, a different view point, which was great. But also I had to step back and really look at myself and go, okay, you've got to let a delegate number one, because I'd been doing it by myself. Yeah. So it was important for me to delegate and then also to allow him to make those decisions and to trust that. But that takes a little time. So I, I would definitely say probably the first six months of us working together uh, in 2021, we were just trying to navigate that and and having a lot of conversations. <laughs> there so was friction. It. it was friction only in a positive yeah. way. You yeah, know, that's Because true. you retire I'd out of a career that. where you knew all of it. Everybody came to you to go to a place where you know nothing, but your partner, your spouse knows everything. And then your different leadership styles and the different <laughs> industry and the different people that you're working with all kind of, co you know, they collide all in one spot. True. Well, and to give a little more flavor, um, you were not only at your job for, you said 31 years, mm -hmm. but prior to that, how long were you in the service? 23. So your style I'm gathering is probably totally a different. little bit more firm. And direct. And direct, yeah. I've so. been told that many times about when I have conversations with people. Yeah, I wouldn't have said it that way. Yeah. You know, uh, you, you need to put the corporate touch, I guess, on the back you, of it. You or need put to wrap that hands, in a little or bit nicer package. It. Yeah, that's, that's what that's I heard right. a lot. You need to wrap yeah. it in a nicer package. And I'm like, well, I'm still getting the point across, right? <laughs> You know, they need to know what the point is. And she's like, yeah, I'm just not with that delivery. Yeah. You know? I will say, though, it worked great with the employees. It, it was a great thing. And I, well. I felt a lot of relief from that specific duty, which I did not enjoy yeah. that much. And so he really he really was able to take that. And I was able to appreciate his style in that direction. But then when it kind of lingered over into my lane of dealing with clients and yeah. intakes and referral sources, I was like, mm hmm you know, wow, that's, that's a little bit more than I would probably do. And so there, there's just finding a balance in there to really appreciate those strengths and also to be able to vocalize what we feel is not necessarily in your wheelhouse or maybe that isn't your strength. And, and to be able to admit that was difficult for both of us. I would re relate it to, you know, basically the first part of our tenure as business owners together was like sitting at the potter's wheel with fresh clay, you know, we, we had to kind of form and mold that. And if you make it too yes. thin, it falls apart. And if it's too thick, it's too bulky and it won't bake in the oven. And so that's kind of what, as we determined what our lanes mm -hmm. were and where we were both proficient was kind of sitting at the potter's wheel and just kind of molding that through the process of becoming good business partners. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought this up because 
we work with a lot of husband and wife teams that want to know what it's like working with your spouse. And mm-hmm. one of my tips is always, you both need to figure out what your lane is and stay in it. And, and we even get, you know, I, I had a big conversation with a father daughter team. It's even worse with, you know, the father and the daughter yeah. who wants to um, have her own responsibilities and not be micromanaged because she's helping her father in this business. And, um, so it's good to hear these stories directly from the mouth of the people mm-hmm. that are doing it. So you made it through COVID with Agape, and then you decided you want to <laughs> own another business. And you True. went through our process and purchased Class 101 franchise. So tell us um, a little bit about how that came about, what motivated you to go that path and to go the franchise route since you had been an independent business owner um, before? Well, I mean, there's two parts of that. And I'll let Melissa pick up here in a second because I don't want to do much talking that regards her story is always much better. But <laughs> like when when we decided to go that route, you know, being the business owner, you got to, you had the opportunity to make decisions for your business and we knew we were kind of confined. We were in one lane and we were seeing a changing world right. uh, that we needed to diversify in order for us to continue to grow and survive. You know, we needed to think about mm-hmm. diversification. So originally we looked at it in agape, like could we provide medical transport? Could we do mm-hmm. things? But ultimately we both looked at each other and said, that's in the same lane. Yeah. You know, as we saw COVID shut the world down, even though we were considered essential business, it still really limited what we could do. So that's what brought us to the point of of venturing out and looking at other franchise opportunities. Mm -hmm. And in that process of meeting you, she had actually done a little study and and researched some businesses in the beginning and had stumbled across Class 101, even before we did our DISC assessment and before we sat with you and before you brought us businesses that might match and which we really felt were compelling to her heart. Me at first, I was kind of like, more kids. I just got six, moved on out of the house. You want to talk about being there, done that. Kids, been there, right. done that. But, you know, as it's grown, the passion's really kicked in. I think that's where I, I want to pass it to her because she tells it so much better. But uh, it, it was it was a great decision to diversify senior to senior, but in a whole different realm of something that you know will continue in the future to grow and build. And kids will always need that option for affordable college to move forward. Well, and you had been through it yourself with Mm -hmm. six of your children, right? So you Mm -hmm. do have some idea of what these parents are going through and and what it's like. It's a struggle. It's not as easy as they used to be where you could be a senior and just apply to a college and hope you got in. Now there's LinkedIn and there's their resumes and there's there's just so many factors now. Mm -hmm. And to make it affordable as we've watched the cost of colleges go up and up and up, right? uh, even for public schools, you really have to have the resource to help make it affordable for them. So Mm -hmm. uh, you want to pick up from there? (laughs) Well, for me, I mean, in diversification, I'll just back up a little bit. In diversifying, you know, I I think there was a little bit of burnout, but also, you know, a home care agency requires a lot of employees. And the base of those employees, as we've seen all across the United States, um, employee problems just began to sort of unravel after COVID, or during COVID, and have continued. And so uh, it, it was a struggle. It's always a struggle. And I began to worry about the trust that we have in our lifestyle and our life is really dependent on someone else delivering those services and goods. Everyone else, actually, Mm -hmm. because that requires the team. And so beginning to think about diversification really started with that. And then it was like, we want to do something together. So we wanted to continue to partner, which we learned about each other in that through, you know, what had happened with Agape. So I I think that was a a huge blessing in that. Um, And then just listening, I was, you know, listening to a presentation that Sarah did and everything she said really just struck a chord right then. And I was like, that's what we need to do. We need to not diversify from within. We need to diversify from without, you know, without or outside and take those experiences that we've learned and try to figure out how we can spark passion, but also deliver something that's meaningful. I mean, that was important to me. Um, and I did, you know, look up some before I thought, oh, I could do this, you know. So, and I you had didn't thought think about you it. You needed me, right? I, I didn't. <laughs> you know, you, you think you can just Google everything, right? Oh, yeah. But 
what a huge difference between Googling and then really going to someone that is a consultant who can guide you and talk to you and you can work through your fears and the process. The process was wonderful, I thought. You know, we were able to profile each other and what do we want out of it, even down to do you want employees at all? How many? Do you want to work weekends? Do you want to work nights? What are you willing to give? What's your style? Um, And all those things pointed her in a direction in which to, you know, say, here's some things I think would match. I never told her about Class 101 or my research. Um, She actually brought that uh, as one. And I kind of looked at Mark like, did you hear that? You know, Um, (laughs) I love it when that happens. I know. I know. And it doesn't always happen like that, but it certainly happened for us. And, you know, I think, too, for me, it was it's it's so much of a passion. Education is a passion. Children are a passion. Um, You know, for me personally, I graduated high school as a foster child in Texas. And so there wasn't an opportunity for planning. There was no one there to mentor. There was no one there to say, hey, you can do this or you can achieve your goals. Or even college was not even a possibility at that time. I actually graduated high school and went to Texas Court Reporting College. Thought, okay, I'll just, you know, that that was kind of my option. But nobody sat down with me and said, college is an option for you. Here's how you can achieve your goals. Here's the options. Here's what they look like. And here's some career choices. You know, I just followed suit into what seemed more natural at the time. Wow. So that education piece was huge for me. It was huge when raising my children and to see them all um, graduate and go to college and get that degree, no matter how difficult it was for us to plan that. And it was, uh, you know, it was a chore. I knew when I saw Class 101's profile, I thought this is really right in line with everything that has happened in life so far. And we wanted something that we could do together in both um bring our strengths and weaknesses together. And we knew we could partner in something new. And I was, I had that hope of, you know, you came in, I was the expert, you were the expert for 31 years in your job. And now this is something that we can do and become the experts together. Together. And, and that's, you know, kind of where class 101 started. So Mm -hmm. talking about lanes, as you're leading into that, do you have the same lanes in this business as you have in your previous business. Well, yes. your current business, they still have it too. Yeah. Yes, yes. your okay. current yeah. business. Yeah. Yes. It's a, it's a complete flop. So you get, uh, it, or a flip, not flip. a flop, yeah. but it's a flip. <laughs> no, it's not going to be a flop. <laughs> it's in your no flop. Yeah. No flop. <laughs> but uh, it's a complete, you know, we've reversed roles because at Agape, she was the the professional, the 25 years she had been there. She mm-hmm. known every aspect of it. She could dream it, sleep it, talk it, eat it, you name it. And, you know, coming into this, she did the administrative role and I did the backside. Well, now I'm doing the marketing, the out there, the face of Class 101, trying to meet with the different chambers and the networking groups and meet with people in the field and, and creating brand awareness. Mm-hmm. While she's th- the other side of that, the face of Agape meeting with, I mean Agape, uh, Class <laughs> 101 yeah. meeting with our students. She, she families, has all yeah. of the students except for when the seniors, the seniors come in, <laughs> They're always more of a challenge because they're the last minute. So kind of the buzzer, shot clock, basketball. We partner those. We partner those. Yeah. And so I I take on most of trying to get them done just for the crunch. But yeah, it's a it's a completely different role. But like I said earlier, that that molding of the relationship from Agape created that. And as we did purchase into class one oh one, knowing we'd both be at the beginning moving forward with the Mm -hmm. business, we've both been able to develop with the business together and still have a lane. Yeah. Although different, still partnering, still sharing responsibility, but having specific lanes that are beneficial to the business and to both of us. So just a real side note for um, anyone listening, you're talking about seniors being kind of like the last minute. What's the ideal time for someone to start speaking with you when their child is in what stage oh, of high we'd school? We'd love to have them when they were coming out of eighth grade into their freshman yes, really. year. Wow. Early yeah. engagement is the changer, it's really. A it's a game changer. Really? Yeah. Yes, because we're able to work with them for a long term, a long time, over four years, and really unpeel the layers uh, as they're growing and discovering things on their own and maturing and, you know, terminology just starting out. You know, my freshmen that I work with, the terminology that they use, it, is it doesn't exist. You know, we're teaching them, okay, this is what a bachelor's mm-hmm. degree is. This is what a master's yeah. means. This is what undergraduate means. This is what tuition means. This is what out-of-state and in-state looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, they know none of that. And then also when we ask them, you know, what would you like to do as far as a career? It's, <laughs> it's like asking a toddler, right? It's like, uh, let's see, fireman, mm. uh, nurse, <laughs> teacher, veterinarian, you know, mm. they have really no idea right. outside of that um, for the most part, you know, or they know what their parents have done. 
And that doesn't really, it's, it's not really the determining factor of what mm -hmm. they want to do with their life. And yet they tend to sort of follow that just because there's just an unknown. So discovering career choices and, and coursework and their strengths and weaknesses individually and their behaviors and how they're programmed um, is part of the process. And the sooner we begin to do that, the better. And by the time we reach their senior year, you know, really in the fall, we're ready. Yeah. We've done the resume. We've done, you know, we've have a LinkedIn profile. We are um, have been visiting colleges. We've been looking at different campuses and locations and size and what feels right to them. And then um, just that process is is great. So the sooner the better. What a relief uh, for parents to yeah. know that all that's done. I mean, I remember being totally. My kids were put on um, like. I don't know what I called it, but they couldn't go anywhere until they got, like, college application was done. I put them on, you know, house arrest, I think, <laughs> one weekend because it, it, that we were trying to do early admission or something. Yes. And I was like, you're not doing anything until this is done. Sorry. You well, know, we glad, manage I'm, all those I'm deadlines. I'm glad you said that, though, yeah. because that's, a, that's an important part of our business, you know, with Class 101 and college planning is to provide a separator mm -hmm. between the parent and the student because a lot of times that can, be, that can create bitterness or yes. the parent Conflict. doesn't get to enjoy or the child doesn't get to enjoy because you have expectations. Mm -hmm. They have their own expectations. And part of the tagline for Class 101 is empower, serve, and inspire. We're doing that for the students, but also the parents are able to sit back and go, man, I'm not having to I can enjoy stay the on them game. about keeping their GPA yeah. up. And I'm yeah. not having to stay on them about yeah. meeting this deadline. You know, I have somebody who's managing those deadlines for me, meeting those in, in the meetings that we have. And, and they're different for freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. But the later you come in, the more complicated mm -hmm. it is to kind of meet those expectations for both the parent and the student. Can oh, still be done. We still, still take them done. as we've seniors. Done, we've we done, take them the super two juniors. We've had you know, last we minute. Them. We've mm -hmm. we're very successful. Our very first student in class 101 was a, was senior. a senior, and he came to us in October. FAFSA was already open. He had not visited any colleges. He had no applications. He had no resume. We got him to four major colleges to visit them on campus. Uh, and he was able to be accepted to all four, yep. and wow. he made his choice. He got scholarship money. He right. raised his SAT score in a mini prep class from uh, 1070 to 1270 wow. in his first prep try. Wonderful. 200 points. The average student raises at 100, you know. So Which those scores are important for, you know, scholarships. Yeah. Of course. So it was, That's it was great. A great. That's mm -hmm. a great success story. Well, and I think what you do takes a lot of um, – I've learned, you know, through my own experience that my my child handles um, advice and coaching uh, a lot better from people that are not me. That's <laughs> true. Every child. Because you know nothing. Yes. Have nothing you ever had your children you somewhere where they come home from a friend's house and the parents say, man, your child is so wonderful. And you're like, who are you talking about? Right. Are you sure you know, we're, are talking, you about sure we're talking about the same child? You that's know? every, I think that's, that's every, every child, every, every parent-child relationship. Yeah. Is, yeah. is built that way. Wow. So I would love to know, I'm just intrigued because you independent business owner and now you're a franchisee. Correct. So give us just a little kind of overview of some of the pros and cons. We tell our clients all the time, there's no perfect situation. Yeah. So what have been some of the things that maybe you're seeing as beneficial being a franchisee and then maybe some of the challenges. Because a lot of times when I'm working with somebody that's an independent business owner, I'll have a frank conversation. I may have had it with you. Like, you know, how are you going to feel about some of these decisions already been made when you're used to being able to make them all on your own? So give us like a quick overview. Well, I mean, of we can both jump that. into that. I mean, the, the, the pros and cons, the pro, the pro of being a, your own business owners, if we want to change marketing strategies, if we want to change color schemes, if we want to change our logo, if we want to, you know, make decisions that are independently good decisions for our business, we can, we don't have to facilitate it through anybody. But then the, the con of that is you're having to do that. You're I say that in my presentation the all the time. You get to, but you have to. You it's have so to true. find the logo. Yes. You have to find the company that can create yes. the logo for you or do your social media. You're responsible for finding all the things that you're independently able to create right. or do. So there's so many choices. And then going into the franchise side of that, the pro of that is they've already built a platform that shows to be successful in growth and color schemes and, mm -hmm. you know, whether everything is like you want it to be, it's, it's already proven. It's a system that seems to be working and those decisions have been made. 
Uh, the con of that is you're not always going to agree with all of those choices, but you right. you should be aware of that going in mm-hmm. that you did buy into a franchise and there are rules and you're, you're going to work by those rules. And the reason they're so strict about it is because they work. Because it's proven, yeah. right? It's yeah. proven, you know. But I think one thing you have learned is that you do have some autonomy um, mm-hmm. to be able to build on the platform that they provide and, and then adjust. You guys made some beautiful modifications on, on the design of your office by using their guidelines and foundation, but we're right. able to really uh, incorporate some of your creativity. Yeah, that's all the girl sitting behind me here. She has a, a wonderful eye, the design eye, you know. But not all franchises allow for that, so that's right. important too. Some yes. have mm-hmm. allow yeah. for more creativity than others. Absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah. I think we knew that too. Um, you know, being independent owners, I, I think like you said, you're able to make those decisions, but also the difficult part of that is as we saw through the pandemic, for me as an individual business owner, it was, oh my goodness, the state is changing everything. The nation is changing everything. And I now have to adapt to that on my own. And who can I pick up the phone and call or who's going to do this for me? You have to do that. That So you have to kind of stop the process of what you're doing and enter into that, which, you know, actually adds a whole nother factor to ownership in that regard. And you're nervous about, did you make the right decision? Was this, was this the correct thing? And, And it's a failure, success. Let's try it. It's kind of a test right? As to whether or not it's going to work. Whereas a franchise, it's already been tested. That gave us a lot of security in wanting to choose a franchise as the next venture in that we didn't have to do that. We've lived that. We're living it now. We still have that responsibility. Mm -hmm. But as a franchisee, you have the luxury of being able to say to all of the franchisees out there or your whole corporate team, you know, hey, here's what I'm having struggle with. And you you're waiting on the answer. Right. right. Or if something new pops up, like a pandemic, right. you're navigating it with a support team and Correct. not all Absolutely. by yourself, which is, yes. you know, that's huge. It's huge. It, it's uh, the feeling of an independent owner is is somewhat lonely, I think, Very lonely. Yeah. versus this whole team that's there to support you and to give you, you know, advice and guidance and that you can reach out to. And, and you're there to do the same. So whatever your experiences are, you can share, they can share. So it's kind of this give and take that you, we didn't get in the independent world. And mm. I would say that's, that's really been the biggest pro. Yeah, it's definitely, that's, that's, that's a huge change because I yeah. can go online with our current franchise and, you know, they, they have these message boards and you have teams, regional teams, and they talk to each other about some of their experiences. Or if I have a question or somebody out of state and I have a student in my state that's interested in their state, I can talk to them and find out all the little ins and outs of that particular college that they're looking at without necessarily having to be the pro on that college because we have other planners that are the pros pros. of those colleges. (laughs) Awesome. We're we're all, you know, communicating together. And as an independent business owner, you know, she could pick up the phone and call other agencies to say, how are you coping with this? How are you dealing? But it was a much more difficult. It's a much more difficult conversation when they're an actual And it's very competitive. competitive. Right. It's a different kind of competition. You know, there's an inner competition within a franchise as well. You know, you obviously want, Want to do well and you're 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 in the comparison to other franchise franchisees and their locations and so I found that to be a little bit uh, uh, stressful for me because you know with agape we can go at our own pace independently we have a business plan we know where we're going every year we work on it and we implement that plan and we've been able to see a huge, huge. success in the implementation of that plan coming into a franchise that business plan works very differently And now you're in comparison to others. And that feeling for me as a perfectionist is difficult. I will say I've dealt with that very difficult. Quietly smile on that. (laughs) Well, and another (laughs) difference is when you bought Agape, it had been in business almost 20 years, like um, 18 years when you purchased it. So it had clients and employees right. already in recognition and now you're building a yeah. brand um you purchased one territory initially and then you guys purchased two more we right did. We did. so that you're creating more from the ground up it is a franchise but what there's only one other owner in dfw so you've got I to build there's some brand two, there's two there's one in okay. grand prairie and one in irving, irving. okay um and but yet the brand is really unknown 
in this part of North Texas. Well, they're working in their territory. So in your market, how would they know that, right? Right. Which I think was a a challenge that we didn't necessarily expect because I think we had had such success as independent owners and you feel like, oh, you know, I know business and I know how to promote that. Um, It's very different, like you said, to come into a business that's been 26 years old and very well known and has that goodwill relationship with the community to a brand that is not known and actually to a service that really isn't very well known in the metroplex and i think that that you have to build that credibility people have to understand what you do so it's a lot of education a lot of educating uh, is part of what we do in marketing well to try to help you get a little bit more well known here in the community how would somebody get a hold of you if they wanted to get a hold of you Oh, there are many ways to get a hold of us. Uh, they yes. can go to class101.com forward slash midcities Texas TX all together, midcities TX, or they can call us at 817. Did I just say 663 <laughs> 2262? I drew a blank sitting here, I guess, on the <laughs> microphone course. in front of the camera, but 817 663 2262. They can reach out and call me direct. Um, we have Facebook and we have Instagram and we have yes. LinkedIn pages as well. So uh, we're here and just trying to create that brand awareness. And, and we're a whole lot more than prep classes, believe me. That, that's a lot of the questions when we yes. say we're college planning. They say, oh, you're ACT or SAT prep. And I, I kind of smirk it's a little such a bit. a small part of I, what I'm we like, do. no, right. that's only one-tenth of, you know, what we do. We offer such a broad service for our students. And, right. and we're both very passionate about it for sure. Well, we appreciate your passion. We appreciate you taking time out of your day to come and share your experience as a business owner with us. And we hope this will help you get some phone calls. So (laughs) to those of you listening, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Please reach out and follow Sarah and I on LinkedIn, Sarah with no H, W-A-S-K-O-W, and Roxanne Rapsky, R-A-P-S-K-E. You can also find us on frannet.com. And on our YouTube channel at FranNet of Dallas, Fort Worth, and Oklahoma, please subscribe. And lastly, if you are listening on any of the podcast platforms, you can find Unpredicted Entrepreneur on any platform you choose. Thanks, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.